Chairperson, the Democratic Alliance stands in solidarity with both Palestinians and Israelis who seek a two-state solution. We embrace rationality based on peaceful coexistence for a secure Israel and a free Palestine. We seek the triumph of rational forces committed to peaceful coexistence on both sides of this terrible conflict. That is why we stand united in our condemnation of the brutality unleashed on the Israeli people by Hamas on the 7th of October. This massacre conjured some of the darkest memories of centuries of persecution against the Jewish people. We condemn in the strongest terms the dehumanization of any person on the basis of their faith, their race, their lineage, or their place of birth. But Hamas's actions on the 7th of October also betrayed the people of Gaza, unleashing a calamity that is unprecedented in living memory upon more than 2 million Palestinians. What is equally true is that the people of Palestine are not defined by Hamas. And the people of Palestine cannot and must not be subjected to collective punishment. That is why the DA condemns, in the strongest terms, Israeli radicals like Minister Eliyahu, who over the weekend threatened the use of nuclear weapons against the people of Palestine. Dangerous statements such as these are transparent dog whistles to escalation, designed to perpetuate an already fractious climate of fear and terror, the disproportionate burden of which is borne by innocent civilians. The DA remains concerned by the escalation of violence and the rising death toll in both Gaza and on the West Bank. The intense human suffering and the scale of civilian casualties must be brought to urgent conclusion. We again call on Israel to ensure that defensive action is indeed carried out within the confines of international law. Both the indiscriminate killing of civilians through the use of carpet bombing and the vile use of civilians as human shields by terrorists must be condemned as acts of immorality committed by men who betray the foundational principles of the very faiths they claim to represent. The DA further calls for the creation of safe zones and for a humanitarian pause in the fighting to ensure the flow of increased aid into Gaza and to allow more civilians to access guaranteed safety. Importantly, as the fighting rages, we call on all peace-loving South Africans to recognize the deeper conflict playing out on both sides of this terrible war. This is not a war between the descendants of Ishmael and Isaac, but rather a war between radicalism, which seeks the annihilation of the other side, and rationality, which recognizes the inherent rights of both the Israelis and the Palestinians to statehood, sovereignty, and security. Fundamentalists on both sides of this conflict who have been stewing in a combustible combination of grievances for generations and who feed off of one another in order to ramp up and rationalize their own extremism must be rebuked by all of us. For peace to be possible, rationality rather than radicalism must win the day. Honorable members, history will remember the significance of this moment and how we either used our voices to fuel hatred and division or advocate for lasting peace. This crisis can only be brought to an end by those driven by peace building, reconciliation and possibility. The question that all of us in this house must today ask ourselves is how we can each be honest brokers of peace. Because despite the lessons imparted by the giants of our democracy, some amongst us today have already descended into the fog of war and are now entirely blinded by it. South Africa's history should serve as a beacon of hope, reminding the world that peace and reconciliation are possible even in the darkest of times. Instead, the governing ANC has altogether dismantled our nation's once respected international standing and exposed their inherent moral bankruptcy. The Honorable Minister Pandor cannot stand at this podium and position the ANC government as an honest advocate for peace. The truth is that the ANC seems to have no genuine interest in building peace in the Middle East. They are only interested in using this tragedy for their own political gain, hoping that they can sow division and distract the South African people from their dismal failure as our government. The minister's recent telephone call to the leader of Hamas squandered any last remaining vestige of credibility her department had left. The Honorable 
Honourable Minister's recent visit to Iran to meet President Raisi, who is actively funding Hamas and whose government has ordered the execution of more than 1,275 of their own citizens since August 2021, has exposed the ANC for the hypocrites that they are. As the prospect of electoral defeat looms ever closer, the ANC stands exposed before the world as the desperate political opportunists that they have now become. But South Africa is more than her government, and we, her people, can still raise our voices in support of fundamental moral propositions, that Israel has a right to exist and to protect her people, that the Palestinian people have a right to live in peace, free from occupation and the threat of unyielding retaliation for crimes perpetrated by terrorists. And that through a two-state solution, both Israel and Palestine can enjoy freedom and prosperity. With these aspirations as our guiding light, the international community must stand together to support restoring the security of Israel and ensuring the return of hostages, the urgent provision of adequate humanitarian aid to Gaza, the establishment of safe zones for displaced civilians, and an urgent humanitarian pause in the fighting to ensure the free flow of aid and to allow more civilians to reach these safe zones. World leaders need to urgently come together and start building the conditions for peace. Now is the time for leaders from across South Africa to unite on the basis of our shared constitutional values and call for peace. Drawing on the lessons of our nation's negotiated settlement in 1994 that averted war and built peace, we encourage all South African civil, religious and political leaders to come together and to offer our mutual assistance in finding resolution to this abhorrent crisis and mapping a pathway to lasting peace in the region. Peace is possible, but we must have the moral fortitude to stand with those who pursue it and to condemn all of those who seek to destroy it. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member.